Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagan, and two days ago I submitted a congressional report card on protecting our basic rights as enshrined in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, uh, not uh, controversial rights like focusing on gun ownership, but just basic core rights, uh, reasonable privacy, uh, right to trial, normal things everybody agrees we should have, <clears throat> and not be swept up in a state where every email you send can be read by the government and shared with corporations. We don't want that. We don't want laws that say that if we have unpopular opinions, we can be locked up forever. Um, and uh, we don't believe in the assurances that uh, unlimited power given to these people will uh, be safely held because even if it were true, uh, a simple change of uh, ownership in the White House and the Senate and so forth could lead to disastrous consequences. So yesterday I went through this stuff and let's see, uh, I looked in this house, it's fairly easy to establish. And I will show you, um, roughly speaking, what I found in the house. So in the house, um, we found that there were these guys here who had very good voting records. Uh, there were one, two, three, four Republicans and one, two, three, four, five, six Democrats. And then when you get into, uh, so what are these voting records? Well, we have the NDAA, so they voted against it. Uh, they voted against CISPA. Uh, most of them, unfortunately, voted for uh, this uh, bill that allows you to be given severe criminal penalties if you enter, if you get too close to a Secret Service agent or a building that a congressperson is planning on visiting. <clears throat> so highly self-interested legislation there and not surprisingly passed overwhelmingly. I don't think there was a single vote against it. That's an interesting one. Then FISA, which is the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which has, is very poorly written um, and allows uh, very questionable surveillance of Americans. And then here is a, a the clause for removing indefinite attention from the NDAA. Uh, this is the Iran sanctions, which I only gave a uh, half waiting to, if I'm not mistaken. And then <clears throat> here we have the uh, uh, U.S.-Israel Cooperation Act, um, which uh, guarantees Israeli military superiority over all uh, potential adversaries, which would be at U.S. taxpayer expense, and doesn't make a lot of sense because uh, we have sold $140 billion worth of weapons to their enemies recently. So this means we would have to give them $140 billion. Of course, these are oversimplifications. I look forward to any views that you share. Audit the Fed deals with the uh, issue of getting transparency in the Federal Reserve. Uh, their arguments against it stating that all central banks operate in secrecy because they're not technically owned by the government. I've never um, put this one into the mix. And then here's the NDA 2013. So this is an interesting uh, lineup. So why are these Democrats here? Uh, virtually no Republicans in this group. Um, in the uh, slightly less strong group. So what is the tendency here to separate them out? So let's look at the fives versus the for example, somebody in the three area and see where the differences are. Uh, let's even look for a Republican. So basically, uh, this Republican voted for the NDAA. He voted for CISPA, Internet Surveillance. He voted for FISA. And he did, to his credit, vote to remove indefinite detention. Um, and these ones are weighted at half, half weighting. It's not uncommon. He did vote for audit the Fed. So that's how he ended up, and he did vote against the NDA 2013. So that's how he ended up in this situation, Mr. Chris Gibson. So <clears throat> the people that are sort of central, centrist, voting for uh, basic human rights in some cases and against them and others uh, are almost all Democrats. Uh, and then the solid guys down at the bottom are more evenly divided. <clears throat> but the ones that are consistently vote against the, the people power, as it were, 
are almost without exception Republicans, and it's a large, hard core of them that have voted for all of these bad bills and against any attempt to reform them. Um, so there's about 200 of them, and so the analysis that I did on the House <clears throat> shows that uh, against totalitarian laws, only 3% of uh, the uh, entire Congress on the Republican side, House, of t consistently votes against totalitarian laws. Of Democrats, 35% consistently vote against totalitarian laws. The way I divided this up. Um, and then the ones that vote for them, 89% of all Republicans vote for them, and 17% um, of uh, all Democrats vote for them. So it breaks down 1.5% uh, Republicans are against totalitarianism, 15% uh, of Democrats, uh, or this is the composition total, 1.5% of all Republicans uh, uh, there's a one half percent block of the House that is Republican that votes against totalitarian legislation. Sixteen percent of the composition of the House are Democrats who vote against it. There's fifty-eight percent, unfortunately, that vote for it, and then there's twenty-five percent which are in between. And um, so today we're looking at the Senate. So let's see if I can get this for you. Uh, so in the Senate. <clears throat> Uh, this is our uh, is harder to assess in the Senate uh, who is for and who is and I need to continue to work on this but uh, the Senate uh, we see that the top group let's uh, uh, I've only got a few things to work with so far so what we've got is we've got the NDAA 2012 um, and I will weight it heavily uh, one and a half points versus minus one and a half. Then there's the audit, the Fed, which I give a half weighting to because it seems that the Republicans and Senate are all for auditing the Fed, um, and Democrats virtually never are. Um, and uh, let's see, do we have any co-sponsors that are Democrats in this list? No, Merkley isn't, and Wyden isn't. Um, so uh, it's all Republicans. And then the people that are spearheading to try to... Um, get FISA, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, under control. In this case, we do have uh, the two Democrats from Oregon who seem to be quite good fellows. Um, so my tendency would want to uh, put this group in as our top group. Um, however, from a scoring point of view, I'm being biased. I have to take Mr. Sanders out because Mr. Sanders um, believes that the Senate cybersecurity bill is a reasonable idea and it didn't get the worst reviews in the world. It's not as bad as some of the bills that went through the House. Um, but we're in a situation where <clears throat> there's constantly more and more of these surveillance laws being passed, attacks on the Bill of Rights, the whole thing's a mess, the Patriot Act. So it all needs to be cleaned up uh, and we need to err on the side of risk. We have to be willing to be subjected to attacks versus turned into sheep. Um, so, uh, yes, private companies have plenty of security. The government has plenty of security. Uh, we're not imminently in danger of all being shut down by a cyber attack. And even if we are, it's worth it to allow that to happen versus to continue passing blank checks for all this non-productive work that does accomplishes nothing except employs people in the wrong areas. People should be producing things that we need, to teaching or uh, food or uh, architecture or any of a number of things that are truly productive, not uh, spying on us and tightening down the hatches and uh, putting the screws in. So, um, so these people voted <clears throat> against the Senate Cybersecurity Act, which was defeated. And interestingly, the tendency is uh, mostly it is Democrats who voted for it and mostly it's Republicans who voted against it. So let's just verify that. So let's sort by party, column C, and let's see if this works. Uh, party. And so we see that uh, amongst Republicans, they almost all voted against the Cybersecurity Act. And with Democrats, it's... Um, 
they virtually all voted for it because a minus one is uh, docking them in our sort of uh, of the respecting the Constitution and our basic human rights <clears throat> in these areas. So then if we look at the NDAA, Republicans in general voted for the NDAA, and Democrats as well voted largely for the NDAA. And unfortunately, it's a uh, wall of shame. So we just sort based on the NDAA alone. Um, we see there were only this small little group of people who voted to against the NDAA, which allows indefinite detention of American citizens. And um, so now we'll go back to just a general sort, because I don't want to uh, bore you. I want to get this over with and just provide you useful information. So here's our, uh, then what other bills? So there's a FISA, which hasn't come to the floor yet. Uh, there's the audit of the Fed, which hasn't come to the floor yet, as far as I understand it. In fact, I'm sure of it. Then there's the NDA Amendment 3018, which actually still left a huge, giant hole to drive through. And this is an important... The NDA Amendment 3018 still could do all sorts of awful things to our rights, and still you can be incarcerated forever because <clears throat> the legal language is, is really badly written. But it was considered a big improvement, and most people who voted for it are to be commended for it. And so here are the worst guys right here. Uh, these are guys you don't want to run into in a dark alley if they have police uniforms and uh, they suspect you of the wrong sympathies. Jay Rockefeller and Mark Pryor are <clears throat> in this group, but it's mainly Republicans. And then this the sort of center is the Democrats. They have weak records. They vote against most of these things. Um, Barbara Boxer voted against. Uh, uh, she voted for the cybersecurity. She voted for the NDAA. Looks like she voted to remove this, but this wasn't uncommon. A lot of people did. She's not involved in FISA sponsorship. She's not involved in the Fed sponsorship. And this is a bill to put limits on money to Egypt and Libya and Pakistan and this is also a very complicated matter because um, it's interjecting into the foreign policy the Senate's power of the purse it's a long uh, conversation that, uh, but I did so I gave it half waiting um, it may even be less than that because yeah no vote would only dock you a uh, quarter point, and a yay vote would only give you a half a point. So I tried to have make it have as minimal impact as possible. And actually, it would be Ron Wyden who would have the strongest record of anyone, I think, other than Rand Paul. No, um, at any rate, he was absent for the NDAA. Um, so, uh, he would be right up there with, let's see, um, he would have four and a quarter points. So then we'll put these folks here. He's at a two and a quarter. We'll, we'll go down to about here, I suppose. And these fellows, although there's John Tester, I'm not sure about him. So he voted for the NDA. So I think we're really stuck. We'll make him green. And that's about all of the friends you have in the Senate on these issues. Um, these other guys are, again, I don't think the sample is strong enough. So he voted to remove the provision. He voted here. Uh, he, we don't have any information about his view on audit the Fed. He hasn't been involved in being named as one of the people involved in um, uh, trying to reform FISA. Um, it's not surprising he voted against limiting the purse strings in Libya, Pakistan, Egypt. So much. I have my personal view, but I need more bills. So this Republicans are favored in the Senate, and the question is, um, why is that? Uh, why is there more of a um, tendency Republicans in the Senate to vote along the interests of uh, of uh, freedom uh, in, and and uh, civil liberties than Democrats? And um, in the Senate, the Republicans are the minority. So 
there may be a factor that the House Republicans tend to vote the line because they're the majority, and the Senate Republicans tend to vote against these things because they're in the minority. They're having to vote on things Harry Reid decides they can vote on. Whereas in the House, I think it's John Boehner who they get to decide who, uh, what comes up. So that may be a factor. But overall, the Senate Republicans on issues of cyber surveillance and on issues of uh, the audit, the Fed, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, from my point of view, enriches bankers and um, allows for paying for this giant military industrial complex. Um, and um, the, on the NDA side, um, the Democrats aren't much better. As you can see, only a very, very few people voted um, to against the NDAA. I think that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the other thing I wanted to point out briefly, uh, is, is you might have seen in the news that HSBC uh, uh, was not given any jail time for funding uh, Al Qaeda and uh, Mexican drug lords, uh, loosely speaking. Uh, uh, things that the rest of us would get a thousand years in prison for, they're not getting a single day because they're too big to fail, even when they commit uh, enormous, massive felonies. I wonder when the drug lords themselves will be too big to fail, since their bankers are. But interestingly, um, the resources you want to look at, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. So this is uh, all of the top estates groups giving to Congress. Um, and then uh, here we have, if I can find it, let's see, I want to find the one on lobbyists. Another thing is, uh, assuming that the Israeli PACs are the ones that are driving uh, these contributions, uh, it's not enough money to account for the Israel policy. It seems like it might really be more ideological or soft factors, because J Street, is a, uh, is the biggest one, and they're actually a pro-Palestine piece, if I'm not mistaken. So um, this these might be people to talk to. Now, in terms of lobbyists, interestingly, HSBC is the number one client to lobbyists in the year 2012. So surprise, surprise. Um, the other thing you should know about. Uh, this is a good site, Map Light, for trying to get some visibility into these matters. And uh, the other thing you should know about, if I can find it, where is Mr. Rand Paul? This is an article that you'll want to look at. The NDA is back. The hideous Mr. McCain, who must be suffering uh, some sort of uh, uh, weird abused child syndrome and wanting to inflict torture on everyone else. Uh, um, not that I want to psych, you know, psychoanalyze people, but um, he has stripped out the Feinstein and Paul uh, amendment to try to have less of a attack on our civil liberties in the NDA 2013, uh, and uh, this is outrageous. And you must contact your uh, senators. At least you can email both of your senators in your state, unlike the House where they won't even let you send the email if you're not in their district. Um, so you can email both of your senators and tell them that they should not vote for the NDA 2013 as written. And I think that does it for tonight. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.